We see it all the time, the rich getting richer, and the poor getting poorer but. But not only that, I lost my job. If the rich already have so much money, why do they always want more? Okay, how about this? Say there was a magic button you could push that would make $1,000 if you win. Everything else in the world would say the same. But if you lose the coin toss, you pay $1,000. Now I'm serious here, mister. Would you push that button? I ain't got to answer no hypothetical situation. Would you push that button? <laughs> Not yes. The tendency to avoid losses, even when faced with a potential gain, is known as loss aversion. This is why people hate paying taxes. But shouldn't people share? Why are people being so greedy? Well you see, hoarding is a survival mechanism developed through the course of evolution. There were good times and bad times. It turned out to be a good strategy to save up during the good times. So we have body fat. And some animals save their food for later. Most wild animals will eat whenever they get the chance. But why do people feel losses more strongly than gains? After all aren't gains just as valuable? Being left with nothing is more dangerous than being left with a little. It is better to live, to hunt again. Rich people even when it seems like they have a lot, seek more to prepare for the coming winter. They have accumulated plenty, but it does not seem like enough to them. This is where socialization comes into play. People's expectations adjust with their relative standard of living. Whether one is born into wealth or simply moves into such a neighborhood, what is normal changes? There are some people who feel that Iran should not be spending millions of dollars on this celebration. While there are still people in need, uh, how do you answer these critics, and, and why do you think it was important to have this celebration? Uh, first of all, how do they know about what is spent? Really, the, the only expenses that are made for the festivities are the two official dinners that we are going to give our guests. Rich people do not necessarily see themselves as rich, so there is always room to squirrel away more wealth. Because of the way real estate markets work, people compare themselves to those of similar social strata. The rich through wealth alone are able to meet all their needs. Bills, utilities, child care, food, travel, expenses, shelter, and they have plenty left over to enjoy the finer things in life. Extremely rich people can even afford to have their own private security and emergency services. One can say, they are relatively self-sufficient within the current societal framework. As a result, even though everyone has loss aversion, rich people have less loss aversion and are willing to take more risks for the sake of gain, like banking on innovation to save us from climate change, rather than reduction of dependency on fossil fuels, whereas third world countries are unable to deal with the disasters, or Microsoft firing their AI ethics board. Rich people take these dangerous, and unnecessary risks, and engage in willful blind selfish behavior because they optimistically believe in their power to mitigate any losses for themselves that are incurred. There is just one problem. Money represents control over resources, both natural and human, and so once a person becomes wealthy, they naturally involve many other people in their risks as more and more resources are put into coordinating and executing those risky plans. The current economic system exerts survival pressure on humans, but what for? For what purpose did humanity leave the trees and oceans? Markets by their nature expand and contract. Many rich people are perfectly fine during these contractions and some may be poised to make money in an economy of winners and losers. The rich already have a safety net, their wealth. In some countries the tax system is used to create a safety net to relieve survival pressures for most people. But as we talked about earlier, people hate taxes because of loss aversion. They feel a need to secure their wealth which they feel is instrumental to both their lifestyle and survival. An interesting caveat regarding wealthy people and their loss aversion levels involves their social environment. A study done in Vietnam revealed that wealthier villages were less loss averse than poor villages. But wealthy individuals who lived in poor environments were more likely to be loss averse than a poor individual who was to live in an affluent village. We are heading overseas taking you first to these protests in Paris Hundreds of thousands of protesters back on the streets today, clashing with riot police over President Emmanuel Macron's proposed rise in the national retirement age from 62 to 64. An environment that creates survival pressure is bad for the economy. It can reduce consumer spending and create feedback loops for economic downturn. 
Survival economies cannot protect consumer demand or guarantee the continued production of goods and services. Survival economies only feel stable during trade booms and teeter on the edge of fizzling out even when there is plenty real-world goods for all. It is not just psychological. The circumstances must be such that if one fails, one does not die. Trade is meant to be a mutually beneficial arrangement to gain access to goods one would not otherwise have. To these ends the environment should be altered to create conditions suitable for people to do so. It is necessary to invest in the public. A destitute environment, a destitute world, even if one themselves is not poor, creates a sense of scarcity. However, currently it is seen to be in the economic interest of the elite to uphold the current status quo. It is understandable given that many public benefits are cordoned off to them. Public spending is seen as charity, and not as something for the rich to partake in. The popular old school of thought is that reducing public spending by focusing government benefits on the most vulnerable decreases tax burdens on people overall. Decreasing public spending was supposed to increase growth. However, employers do not pay their employees enough because markets optimize for reduced costs, including labor costs. It is also said that segmenting benefits can create poverty traps since benefits are taken away from people who may almost be financially stable, but are still dependent on government aid. Thus the result is persistent inequality that we see today where consumer spending remains stagnant and decreases during contractions. Growth may be experienced by companies as they capture savings on labor spending but eventually the big impact will be that they won't have any customers later on as everyone wants to save what they have. And this creates a survival, every man for himself situation that causes trade to evaporate. The universalization of public goods is to truly become public is a necessary step to stop political infighting. Let's take transportation for example, it is easy to gawk at price tags, and so one feels it is necessary to charge to make up for the exorbitant costs. Note however that this process of charging decreases the utilization, in other words, one has limited the effectiveness. What do I mean by this? If you only look at the cost the framework is one of loss. However if you look at what has gained you will see that it will have a positive impact on productivity and commerce. These positive impacts cannot be felt by something such as a railway operator. They are felt by a large scale on the public at large. A government, which is dependent on tax revenue, in other words can make back what they spent in terms of increased tax revenue from their population. This is a mindset that does not see things as public spending but as an investment. Oftentimes when such things are proposed the question is asked, who will pay for it? The answer is that it will pay for itself at least in theory. The improvement of public services so as to be desirable for everyone to use is also a prerogative. As the environment improves more and more it is possible to have a positive feedback loop. If everyone becomes a stakeholder within such a system, then everyone will have the desire to improve it. Perhaps instead of spending money on improving their little paradise, people can transform the world they live in so that is where they want to be. This was part of a series on ending the rat race. May we look to a brighter future.